All right, on my recent KT88 single-ended amplifier build, I had someone comment um, on my post, and he said, uh, ouch, I feel your pain. Uh, so much time you spend figuring it all out. Um, he's talking about the, uh, the, the uh, drilling of the chassis in the wrong place there that I've got to fix. But anyway, I'm not going to have the part in this weekend to continue on that, so it'll be another week. The, part, the uh, new chassis will show up next Tuesday. But this guy, uh, 1959 Bree here, B E R E Barry maybe. Um, nice video. Anyhow, I would like to ask one favor. Could you pretty please elaborate on the purpose of the choke, what it does, and how it does it? I've been looking for that for info on that, but all I keep finding is the choke of a carburetor. And I thought it was a really good question, and uh, so I thought I'd make a video today on what the heck is a choke and uh, why do we use them in. Uh, tube amplifiers. All right, I thought I'd take a two-prong approach to this video. The first part, I'm going to walk you through it here just from a uh, schematic standpoint. And then I thought we'd go over on the bench and uh, just mock this, uh, mock this power supply up. And I'd show you uh, maybe how this uh, choke actually helps uh, do its purpose and maybe what the power supply would look like with the choke or without the choke. So um, kind of get you some hands-on experience. But uh, let's dive in here. Okay, without getting too deep into power supply design and theory, I'll walk you through the basics. You, you've got a cord that goes from your wall outlet in your house, which is about 120 volts AC, peak to peak um, RMS voltage, and um, feeds into this, goes through the fuse here and the switch, feeds the primary of the transformer. The other side of the transformer, you've got a couple different windings. One winding feeds you 5 volts AC sine wave, the sole purpose is to heat up the filament in this 5AR4. The 5 here indicates it's a 5 volt tube. It needs 5 volts to heat up the filament properly. Um, you've got another winding here at 6.3 volts, which would be an AC sine wave coming out the other side. And the sole purpose of that is to heat up the filaments in the other tubes that are 6.3 volt filaments. That would be the KT88s and the driver tube in, the, in this case. Um, and then you've got your, what I would call, high voltage secondary here. And if you'll notice, it is rated at 380 volts, 0 volts, and 380 volts. So what that means is this, this, this winding will provide an AC sine wave that goes 380 volts positive, back down to 0, and 380 volts negative. So if you measured that kind of peak to peak from the top of that wave to the bottom, um, it would be 760 volts right here you would have going into this rectifier. Um, and this rectifier, the 5AR4, what it is is it's a dual diode tube. So you basically have two diodes. If you picked up some 1N4007's teeny little bitty black diodes today, um, two of them serve the purpose of, of one of these great big tubes. Um, but I could get into a whole long debate on why I think tube rectification is better in a tube amplifier than some diodes, but that's almost a religious debate, so we'll stay out of that today. Okay, so the way this works, this is a nice clean sine wave. It goes up and down over time. Basically, your voltage is varying from zero, point, zero volts to a point of maximum, back down past zero to a, to a negative point of negative maximum, back to zero, so on and so forth. So over here at the power input, this would be about 120 volts up and down from if you measured from here to here. On the other side of this transformer sitting right here, this would be 760 volts. That's the purpose of the transformers, to raise that voltage to a much higher place. So 760 volts from here to here. And then you would go through this rectifier, and what you would get on the other side of that is you would basically take all the negative peaks um, of this sine wave and you would flip them to be positive. That's called rectification. So now you don't go below zero and that's why um, zero now is down here at ground and you just go positive. So you'd go up, you'd go up, you'd go up, okay? Um, and so that would be considered a half, I mean a full wave rectified signal when it looks just like this. So now if you tried to use this uh, full wave rectified signal as a DC power source, in other words, you'd connect your, your negative here to, to this ground point, which would be right here, and you would connect something to the positive, which would be right up here. If you tried to use that as your, let's just say, the, uh, 
the DC to feed the plates or maybe the uh, grid bias on your, um, your um, driver tube or maybe your output tubes, what you would hear is a lot of noise and a lot of hum. Uh, because it is not a steady state DC signal at this point in time. Um, it's this full wave rectified signal which has a lot of ups and downs to it and it would sound like 120 Hertz. Remember it was a 60 Hertz sine wave but now that we rectify it it's kind of up, 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 up. So you got kind of four cycles here where you would have had two before. So instead of a 60 hertz hum, you would have a 120 volt hum at this point, uh, which is not real appealing to the ears. So we've got to find a way to turn this signal into a steady, solid DC level. And you do that via filtering, okay? And there's a couple different kinds of filters. Um, there's something called a choke input filter and there's something called a capacitor input filter. And both of them may use a combination of chokes and capacitors. It's just kind of which one shows up first. So in this amplifier design here, the first thing you see after the rectifier is a capacitor sitting here in parallel. So this would be considered a capacitor input um, filter for your power supply. And this is what would happen right here in this picture. If you put this capacitor across it and now you measure it here at this capacitor, what happens is um, this upswing of the positive here as it's going positive, it would charge the capacitor. And then as it starts, the signal starts to come back down here, the capacitor would start to discharge and it would carry some of the voltage across into the next signal. And you can see that here with the green line. In other words, it gets charged up and then as the signal starts to go negative again, the capacitor starts to filter out, as the word we'll use here, um, some of the kind of bumpiness of this power supply because it discharges slowly and then it gets charged back up, discharges slowly. So you start to end up with something that looks a little more like a sawtooth wave here. Um, and the problem is with a single capacitor, no matter how big you make it, you can never get this to be a solid smooth line across the top at this point. Um, and for some, for some um, things you're building, this little sawtooth wave may be perfectly fine for whatever you're feeding. But I can tell you for an audio amplifier, you will hear this. It will, uh, it will be another 120 hertz home tone, but instead of sounding like a 120 hertz sine wave, it'll sound like a 120 hertz sawtooth wave, which is a nasty, harsh sounding uh, signal. So what do you do to turn that little uh, 120 hertz saw wave um, little signal into a flat, straight line DC? Well, you do something here you add in multiple elements to your filter. So this would be called a C, L, L stands for inductor, C. So you've got capacitor, inductor, capacitor. You also in some amplifiers see what's called a C, R, C filter. And all these are low pass filters. Anytime you put a capacitor and then an inductor, or a capacitor and a resistor in this format, it's a low pass filter. And so what you're trying to filter out is um, you know, this uh, 120 hertz or what would be considered a low signal there. Um, and so what this inductor does here, and by the way, this thing we're calling an inductor um, is uh, also been termed uh, in power supply world called a choke. And I don't know why they call it that. Maybe it's helping to uh, choke down the, uh, the little uh, signal that's riding on top of it. But basically, through the combination of this capacitor, a choke, and then if you even want more filtering, you add another capacitor on top of that. I, sometimes you'll even see another resistor after that, and maybe another capacitor or another choke and another capacitor. You don't see more than one choke used in an amplifier very often, unless you're split railing, which would mean you would you break out a whole separate power supply section for the left channel and a separate one for the right channel. But, but typically you'll see a CLC and then typically following that you'll see some resistors used with additional capacitors to drop voltages down to other levels to feed various voltages you need in the power supply. So 
Um, this here is a 10 Henry choke um, at 200 milliamps. So you kind of have to figure out on the other side of this choke or this power supply, what all are we feeding um, throughout the rest of this amplifier and how much current is it going to pull? So you basically go pull up a data sheet for your KT88 output tubes and you look at those and you say, well, each one can pull this much current. How much current is my uh, driver tube going to pull? And then there's probably some lossiness in, in the whole system. So you, you add some to it and you come up with a number and you say, well, I need to choke at least that big or bigger. Because if you'll notice here, unlike these capacitors that are in parallel with this circuit, this choke is in series, meaning all of the... Um, all the voltage feeding the rest of this amplifier is going through this choke at this point in time. Um, so it's got to be able to handle a current rating here. And typically you'll see values of chokes in two power supplies range anywhere from about 5 Henry's up to about 30 Henry's. And typically the, the, the higher the uh, inductance rating in Henry's, uh, the better filtering it will do. There are a few downsides to going larger. One, these things get very big and they get very heavy and they get very expensive. So you really only want to use as big of an inductor as needed to get you a flat uh, DC um, signal there. And one way you can go about that is actually build it on the bench and model it. Or there's a really cool piece of software called Power Supply Designer uh, by Duncan. I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so you basically download this software. Just search for PSU Designer, Google it. Um, download, you'll find Duncan's website. Download the software. And then up here, I basically modeled the power supply. If you'll notice here, I've got a power transformer with 380 volts on each side. I've got the 5R4. It kind of represents itself as two diodes here, and it'll say full wave. I then put in place the 10 microfarad capacitor, the 10 Henry choke, and the 200 microfarad capacitor on the other side. Uh, matches up with what we had in our uh, build here. And then I had to simulate a load over here of 100 milliamps. You could change that to whatever you wanted. Um, and then you click the simulate button. And you might get a little error there. Ignore that. But then you can pick, pick different places in the, uh, in the amplifier to actually look at. So let's look at um, here at C1. And let's look at the voltage at C1. You can see here that what happened was when this power supply first started up, um, it took a little bit for the capacitors to charge up. But as you can see here, uh, bouncing up here somewhere around 460, 470 volts um, is your DC signal now. But you've got all this ripple on top of it, 120 hertz ripple. Um, so if you came over here then and measured it though, instead of at uh, capacitor 1, measured it at capacitor 2, which is on the other side of the choke. So you've actually now put the choke into play and the second capacitor. Uh, look at what you got. Takes a minute when you first start the circuit up for it to kind of stabilize. Uh, but you can kind of see it superimposed on top here. Um, you see a flat green line. So if you wonder what the choke does, that's what it does at the end of the day. Let's go build this thing on the bench and uh, play around with it the same way with an oscilloscope. Okay, we've got this whole scenario built out on the bench right now. And what I'm measuring here, I know it looks a little crazy, and it kind of is uh, Frankenstein lab style stuff here. But um, I promise you it's all, uh, it's all laid out properly. If you'll notice up here on the scope though, um, we'll zoom in on that just a little bit here. All we have in play right now is the bridge, I mean the... Uh, the 5AR4 uh, full wave rectifier. And, and remember we talked about how you would see a sawtooth um, style um, signal at that point. That's what we've got going on. So what I'm going to do now is kind of uh, switch back and uh, I'm going to put these other elements into play and let you see what a capacitor will do. And then I'll let you see what a capacitor along with the inductor and another capacitor, in other words, a CLC filter, will actually do. Okay, as you can see now with the scope probe, I'm measuring just across the capacitor in play at this point. And if you'll notice up here on the oscilloscope, um, our little voltage um, wave has gone way down significantly. Um, so it's helping filter out and keep this more flat at a DC level. And now at this point, we've got um, both the inductor here um, 
or IE called the choke and we've got this filter capacitor in play and we're measuring at the, um, the top side of that filter capacitor now and if you'll notice up here we pretty much have a flat line at this point in time um, we're down to just a pure DC signal and in this scenario that's the signal for the KT88 single-ended that we'll be feeding the plates of the output tubes with as well as using some dropper dropping resistors to feed the plates of the input tube and so if you have any if you have any AC component on your plates that you're feeding it's going to show up as it's going to get amplified it's going to show up as hum on the output so um, hopefully this helped you understand a little bit of what the role the choke is playing it's uh, just another component in the power supply sometimes people use a resistor a CRC um, which works fairly well but um, a, an inductor does a much better job um, you can kind of see the downsides though of an inductor um, it's a big heavy metal device wasn't cheap um, 40 40 dollars or so um, adds a lot of weight to your chassis um, but at the end of the day, it's um, one of the most effective and best ways to filter a tube power supply. So hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll get back to the uh, single-ended KT88 build next weekend.